Welcome to the 11th video in the Marine Invertebrate Biology course series. And this one is the first video, probably the only one, on platyhelminthes, which are flatworms. Platy, okay, is means flat, and helminth is worm from the Greek for worm. Flatworms. And these things can be very beautiful. Uh, them at night, tend to see them ghosting when uh, the light comes on them. They tend to be uh, negatively phototaxic, which means that they tend to go away from light. They can be really beautiful, uh, sometimes confused with nudibranchs, which have different features. We'll cover those when we get to mollusca, the phylum mollusca. Moving up the evolutionary ladder complexity from periphera to cnidaria, which were diploblastic. They had two tissue layers. Uh, periphera had no tissue, if you remember. And now we have triploblasty, so three layers, triplo, and then blast layers. We start with the endoderm, which is lining the gut cavity, and the ecto or epiderm lining the outside, and then there's tissue on the inside. So this is a little more complex and that allows the or the evolution of things like organs. You can't guess why flatworms are called flatworms. It's because they're flat. There's no circulatory system. And that means that the only way that they can get oxygen into the center tissues of their body is by diffusion, which works very slowly and can't keep up with the metabolic activity in the uh, tissues that are deepest within the body as they get too thick. The uh, smallest surface area to volume ratio of any shape is a sphere. So as, the, as you get further and further away from the surface area, then, uh, and as you get more spherical or round, then you have a longer, you've got more tissue that needs oxygen compared to the surface area where diffusion can happen. So you should probably go to the circulatory system video that I've put, to which I've put a link on Moodle and watch it to understand diffusion if you don't. Why in the world would I put a naked guy with no genitals in this slideshow in an invertebrate biology class? Well, it's to indicate bilateral symmetry. So if you cut this side, or if you take it this side and this side, they are mirror images of each other. Be a little different with the heart over here, or just a little bit to the side. Some other minor differences uh, between the lobes of the brain, but bilaterally symmetrical means that they are mirror images on both sides. Now, sponges, remember, had no symmetry or asymmetry, and cnidaria had radial symmetry. So now we have bilateral symmetry. Uh, they are unsegmented. We'll look at uh, something when you see something with segments going across it, then you know that's more of an earthworm or um, uh, or something in the earthworm phylum, which is which are annelids, and they have an incomplete gut, a two-way gut, which is the same as cnidaria. There's one entrance for food to go in and out. The food goes in the gut. Uh, in through the mouth and out through the mouth. That's two ways. And if we look at another image, so if we're looking at food going in, it goes into this thing called the, the there's the mouth here, right at the end, and then this long thing is called the pharynx. It's muscular, it's a muscular tube that can, uh, that can help move the food down into the gut and then um, constrict so food doesn't leak back out and then also open wide to let the food go out. And you can see the intestine uh, in this one that's in blue over here. It's the dark area. And that is now you can see quite a lot of surface area in order to allow for greater di uh, absorption of the di the products of digestion, and it's a much more com complex gut than we saw in the cnidarians. 
still only one opening where the food goes in and out of the same opening. So food will come in and out of the of the mouth, out the pharynx. We also see that this thing has something called cephalization, which means that there's a grouping of the sensory organs towards one end of the body. And when you have the grouping of sensory organs towards one end of the by, body, it's got these sensory lobes, eye spots, which are actually just photoreceptive patches. They're not actually eyes, but they don't have lenses or uh, any of the other structure of an eye. They are photosensitive patches and also a brain, which is essentially just a large collection of neural tissue that organizes the uh, movement of the body and sends uh, instead of a neural net, it can organize the movement and send signals up and down the body through this uh, ventrolateral nerve. So the organization now, instead of being a neural net like in Nidaria, is all in one place. So we're starting to see the, the evolution of an eye, a brain, and a cephalization, which is a head. And that implies when you've got cephalization that there'll be directional movement. The thing will move purposefully in one direction. Okay, another view of cephalization. breeding. So they're hermaphrodites. And we didn't see copulation in Nidaria or Periphera, but now we see copy, we have the, the evolution of copulation. So I have put a link to something called penis fencing in Moodle, and it's definitely worth, worth a watch. But what these things do is they try to essentially come up and they're both they're both hermaphrodites the whoever loses is the one who gets stabbed by the other one's penis and inseminated so the you're, the reason you lose is because uh you have to now brood the eggs and uh that takes energy you can't merrily go on your way and try to stab another uh individual with your penis you have to um be the mom for a little while and be pregnant and carry the eggs and then lay them. And that all takes energy. So another way that they can breed is they can breed sexually or asexually. And asexually, what happens is they can do something called transverse fission. So fission mean fission means splitting in two uh, or fragmentation is a little chunk could come off and then grow into a new in individual. But what happens is these things actually will split right down the middle, They'll grow two heads, one head, two heads, and keep splitting. Uh, and both of uh, those organisms will be able to be able to crawl away and survive. Interestingly, we see this as well in uh, starfish and at the cellular level. So this is a paramecium that is splitting in two. And your cells do this, they divide when they divide and, and reproduce and you grow, then that is by transverse fission. So to review Phylum platyhelminthes, the name comes from the 
platy for flat and helminthes for worms. They're flat worms. They're bilaterally symmetrical. They have triploblasty, a two-way gut. Okay, so the mouth and the anus are the same opening. If you, like us, we have a, a mouth and anus that are different openings. That's called a one-way gut. They have a nervous system that has, uh, that has evolved, which is a little more complex, and it's not a nervous net, but rather an organized uh, central processing nervous system with a brain, generally dorsoventrally flattened. That means from the top to the bottom flattened. And hermaphrodites, and they uh, feed in many, many different ways. That's it for platyhelminthes and video 11 in this series.